to me, a, a random testing is the best way to make sure the sport is somewhat clean. I still think guys are using, I, I still think science is ahead of the testing and these guys that have money especially know how to work the system. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Brian. Um, let's let's just jump right into Cody Garbrandt. I just want your thoughts on him and the opportunity to fight a former champ because fighting a former champ is a big deal in my eyes. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, like when I got this opportunity, I was like, kind of like surprised that this was the name they gave me after a long layoff and everything and you know not even knowing if maybe the UFC was going to take me back and whatnot I was was expecting maybe an up-and-comer or something like that but they gave me this opportunity and I was you know jumped right on it because this is a, a chance for me to kind of erase everything in the past you know and start over clean slate so I look at it as a, a huge opportunity for me and uh I can't, I can't wait to get in there with the former champ. You said that it allows you to start new, you know what I mean? When you started the training camp for this fight coming up, was that kind of like the theme to it? It's like, yo, I'm a totally different fighter now. I'm I'm, I'm starting my, I don't know, is it your second leg or third leg of your career? What is it? Yeah, I, I would say a, a second chance, you know, like a, a, a redemption song essentially is, you know, what it was for me was mentally like getting back in the gym after the neck surgery and everything. It was kind of a blessing in disguise. Nobody wants injuries, you know, but like to be away from the game and kind of have everything taken away from you and know what that feels like. It makes getting back into the game like that much more exciting, refreshing, new. And I feel like for me, I needed that. You know, I'm a veteran. I have a lot of fights and you get complacent after a long time in this game. And I feel like that was kind of happening to me even in the gym a little bit too, is like, do you really want to be here? Are you learning? Are you trying to get better? Or are you just like, ah, I just got to get this session in. So I feel like this whole experience kind of gave me that new perspective of feeling like a new fighter again. Like, oh, this is like, I'm, I'm getting back into the UFC. Like, this is new. I, I'm excited. I'm reinvigorated. Yeah, going through that as well, man, it's, you know, of course it's physically you know, draining, but I could only imagine how mentally draining it was for you to think that your career could be possibly over when you're at the highest level still. Like, how did that feel? Yeah, it was like one of those things where like, I'm, I wasn't personally ready to be done fighting. You know, I feel, I know I'm age wise, I'm a little bit older for Bantamweight, but like I have a healthy body, healthy mind. I, I you know, I, I feel like I haven't taken too much damage in my career and I wasn't ready to stop. So I was like, you know, I hope the UFC takes me back because this is where I want to finish up my career. You know, I don't want to be having to kind of finagle my way around these other promotions and try to get a couple wins and get back in. So I was kind of like just kind of manifesting and praying on like, I hope that this comes to fruition and, and, and they really see, you know, that I'm cleared now, I'm healthy and they give me that chance to kind of right that wrong you know that that last fight kind of just got pulled out from under me and i was like well that this was this is the last fight on my deal still so like you know it's kind of like uh the pressure is still there for that but i'm just excited that i get this second chance and uh and i can't wait have people not seen who you fought like you've been fighting top 15 guys man the whole time pretty much yeah i mean i, I fought the who's who in the bantamweight division i mean i fought a lot of top guys um and in and, and this next one is, you know, former world champion. That's, you know, the second time I fought a former world champion. I fought Hennon Burrell, you know, past his, his prime a little bit. But, like, um, just, you know, the names that I fought, the guys that I fought, I fought I've always stepped up and said yes to, to any competition when a lot of guys wouldn't. And uh, I think the UFC recognizes that in me. And that's kind of why I feel they're giving me this chance. Like, hey – you know, we said we would, and, and and this is your chance to kind of show us like you, you are who you are, or you're not. So uh, it's it, it's big for me to be able to do that. And honestly, like to get this name Cody Garbrandt, like for me is like it just added a whole bunch more excitement to what was already there for me to just get back into the gym and start training again and feeling healthy again and knowing I'm going to be back in the cage. Uh, to get his name was like. A level up like all right now we're gonna really put the work in because this is this is a chance that not everybody gets you know a second chance 
Yeah, especially with the the name that Cody Garbrandt has, you know, it draws a lot more attention, of course, to him, but also to you and your story and your comeback, which is great, man. I feel like that's that's more of an opportunity for you to, like you said, have a redemption, you know, and uh, and, you know, a lot of questions when fight week comes is going to be towards you and like how you feel and, and, you know, you coming back from the neck injury. Are you ready to take those like cameras and all that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm excited for it. You know, I think that's another thing is like, like I said before, the complacency, like you get used to these things and they just kind of become like a chore. And I feel like being away from the game for a while, not knowing if I'd ever be back in the game, it made me feel like a different level of appreciation for for being here, ever being here and, and being able to get back here again. And now like going through this process again, where I have to like, diet down and cut the weight and focus on a fight and live that disciplined lifestyle that I'm used to is like, to me, that's like home. You know what I mean? That's where I feel like myself. So like to be able to get back and do it again, like now it's like a clean slate, like I said. So I'm excited for that all. Whereas before, maybe I was kind of like, oh, I have to do this. You know, we got to go through this again. Well, now it's like, no, I, I get to do this, you know, and, I, and I'm blessed. Yeah. Pay-per-view. Um <laughs> How was the weight when you got back into training? Sorry, my dog. My, my garage is opening up. People. Everybody has a dog. Everybody has a dog. <laughs> what was that again? Sorry. How was the weight when you got back into training? You know, some guys, when they get surgeries, they just blow up. And I don't think – it didn't seem like you blew up much. Did you? Uh, I, I did get a little bit heavier. Um, you know, I was kind of like walking around like 165 around there when I got done, when I first got back in the gym. Uh, now I'm in the high 150s, which is kind of normal for me this far out. I mean, I typically – I'm a little bit heavier now than I was in the, in, the, in the past. But I think that's everybody. As you get older, you just kind of hold more muscle, a little bit more weight. Uh, the creatine does that as well. So once I stop the creatine, I'll lose like four to five pounds of water. And then I kind of start you know, cutting down from there. But every time I show up for fight week around 150, 149, and I'm good to go. And, you know, MMA, man, training is probably the most grueling of any sport. You know, was there any, like, uh, I don't want to say fear, but, like, hesitation when you first got back with the neck? There was a little bit, right? I, I had to kind of build back that, that, that um, you know, mental strength on, like, okay, my body's good to go. Like, I'm going to go 100%. You know, as I first got in, I mean, a couple of months ago, I'd say, I was taking it easy, doing the smart work, you know, pad work and cardio and swimming and bag work and drilling with my brother who I've had, you know, training with me throughout my career. You know, having smart training partners, them being aware of my situation was very important. My coach, he knew how to treat me and run me through hard enough sessions where it wasn't necessarily like I'm getting choked or like I'm getting my back taken and getting, you know, uh, uh, you know, stuff going on with my neck, but I was in a lot of scrambling scenarios and intense, high intense training without really the risk of it, uh, further injury. And now after a couple of months where I've been sparring and feeling my neck, I, I don't feel the same feelings I was having. I didn't realize how bad it was. You know what I mean? I got used to it. I was like, oh, I, my neck's always been tweaked for like years and years. I'm like, I'm used to these, these pinches and this burning going down my arm and everything. And now I've sparred, you know, countless amount this last month and a half, and I haven't felt any negative symptoms or anything like that. Um, so it, it's been good to to get through that mentally and feel like I can be 100% and go as hard as I can. Man, it seems like you recovered extremely fast. Did the doctor say that your recovery was faster than normal? Yeah, it was actually funny. The first time I saw him was like six weeks post-op. It was supposed to be about a three-month four months, you know, full recovery as far as, and that's on the good end. You know what I mean? Some people, this kind of surgery can take, you know, eight months, a year, like, it, you know, you, you can deal with lingering effects. So it's scary to think about, but I honestly believed in my, my health, you know, uh, I, you know, I've always ate healthy and did the right thing. So, you know, I don't drink, I don't party or anything like that. And it's like, I think that paid off in this scenario because the doctor saw me six weeks later and was like, you're almost fused, you know, like you're, you're already starting to fuse, he's like you're healing super fast. And I was like, oh man, that's great to hear because, you know, I wanted to get back in the gym as soon as I could to know that like my career was going to uh, resume. So it was nice to hear that. Yeah, I've interviewed uh, Charles Rosa 
like many times throughout the yeah. years and even throughout his neck injury. And I think he was gone for like more than a year, maybe almost two years uh, with the neck injury. And have you, you know, I, I've seen you talk about speaking with some of the fighters that have had the same injury or have had the surgery. Like what type of advice did they give you that has benefited you moving forward? It's funny you bring that up because Charles was one of the guys that reached out to me when this happened. I had spoke to him. We talked on the phone for like an hour and a half. I, you know, I didn't even know the guy, but it was so kind of him to just give me his time, you know, and give me some words of encouragement, telling me the same thing was going on with him. And he came back and it took a long time. But um, he, funny enough, he had the same exact surgeon as me. And um, he he got back to fighting in the UFC. He said he fought seven times after the surgery and, and his neck was, was fine. You know, he, he felt fine. What happened with him was he had two surgeries. The first one failed and that was from a different surgeon. Then he saw this surgeon who was my surgeon and he fixed him up and got everything cleared away. And um, that was like real reassuring to hear, you know, because I was like, well, this guy went to this guy. He's one of the best in the country at hospital special surgeries. And uh, it made me feel confident about going through with it and, and, and coming out the other end, like a, a better man, like a better fighter, healthier and everything. And Charles was like a big, uh, you know, a big help with that. And I talked to other fighters too that had had like some disc replacement and stuff like that, which is a little bit different. I think the fusion is a little more invasive, but, uh, you know, I've seen these guys come back from these injuries. Aljamain Sterling had a disc replacement, came back and became world champion, you know? So I saw it was done and I just believed like I could do it too. Yeah. How important is that for you to have that support, you know, have that encouragement to have like validation that you can come back, you know, because let's say you were the first one to do it. It'd be tough, right? Yeah, man. I mean, because like no one ever thinks it's going to be them, right? You know, so like when it happens, you're shocked. Like, wow, like I didn't realize my neck was that bad. Like I knew I had like stingers and, and nerve, you know, damage going on. And I just got used to it over the years. And I, I kept training through it and working through it. But it was affecting me, you know, like my strength was off. Uh, my my punching pop was off. And these little things that, that are big deals in fights, you know, and uh when I talked to these guys, it was just like, all right, like I'm going to go, I'm going to do this because it's going to be worth it. Cause I kind of have to do it in order to resume my fighting career at the best possible way. So it's, it's, you know, I got to take the chance now while I'm still somewhat young, get this done and recover and, and try to get back in there. And just hearing from these guys and knowing like it's possible and that they fought numerous times in the UFC after was like, all right, I have that as ammunition, you know, that like when they, when the UFC asked me how things are, like I can bring this up and have that conversation with them to get back in there. All right, let's get, go back to the matchup. Cody Garbrandt, his last fight was against Trevin Jones. And man, was that fight odd to you? Yeah, it was. I, I was kind of like, um, it was kind of like two guys that were like, agreeing to like not really fight much and i thought it was a little bit weird i know cody has had some bad knockouts you know as of late and like maybe his style has changed a little bit but you know trevin jones does have punching power and i think he he kind of was cautious with that and then trevin jones was cautious with you know cody's explosiveness and it was just like kind of a lot of like evading and, and avoiding each other and then a couple of grappling scenarios but it was a weird fight when you see something like that happen with a fighter in their next fight, you don't know really what to expect. So do you look at that and, and take too much off of it? Or do you just say, hey, I'm looking at Cody Garbrandt as the Cody Garbrandt that we know him as? Yeah, I mean, for me, it would be stupid to say like, just that one fight and single it out and be like, oh, that's him now. You know, uh, I definitely don't look at it like that. I look at all these fights and I kind of view Cody as like the Cody that beat Dominic Cruz and that's his potential you know he could be that guy so like I know he's got great boxing and he's explosive fast good footwork and everything but uh you know it's on me to be the best me and that's like the most important thing is focusing on myself training as hard as I can giving max effort and making sure that like I really uh go in there with gratitude that I have this second chance and, you know, do you feel like uh, aggressiveness and, and just being in his face, like that's going to be important in this fight coming up? 
Yeah, I think one of the most important things is like showing him that I'm not going to overly respect him or his name or what he's done. Like being showing my presence early in the fight, you know, making sure he feels my power and that he feels that I'm I'm in there to fight. Like I'm in there to to scrap and and put my hands on him and I think with him, you know, when that happens, sometimes the fight changes for him. You know, I know he's been wrestling a little bit more in his fights lately. Seems like that's something he's worked on. Uh, I think he has had wrestling in the past, just didn't use it much because he, he prefers to box. But uh, I'll be looking out for that. You know, I know uh, once you do get in his face and get aggressive, that's something he kind of looks for uh, instinctively. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just... Getting in his face, showing him no respect, really, and just uh, believing in my my skills and my uh, my power. The UFC man and USADA they're splitting at the end of the year, man. Like, what do you think about this? Because they're bringing in a whole new governing body or whatnot. Yeah, I I don't really like. I don't know what to think about it. I think realistically, it's just going to continue to be the same thing. It's not like the fighters get like you know get to really put too much say into these things and change these rules and and have you know uh, a union where like we can come together and decide we like this, we don't like this. You know, <clears throat> to me, uh, random testing is the best way to make sure the sport is somewhat clean. I still think guys are using, I, I still think science is ahead of the testing and these guys that have money especially know how to work the system. Uh, but uh, to me, I'd rather someone show up random and test me than just kind of it be a free for all and not know what's going on and you know, kind of uh, you know have a disadvantage in there potentially with someone who's using uh, versus someone like me who's Really, you know, one of my most proudest things is being clean in this sport, to be honest. So, uh, you know, I'd hope everybody was, but uh, I bet, you know, that's not the case. So hopefully this new governing body is just as strict with their testing and, and they're on top of things and they do things the right way. But uh, I guess with the time that they show up and showing up on fight day and stuff like that, they have to figure out a way to kind of avoid those, those instances. Yeah, that's complete bullshit that they would show up on fight day or even like the night before the fight after you've weighed in and you got to rest to fight the next yeah. day. That's crazy, right? Yeah, it's like, I mean, they have to know, you know, like that it's the worst time to kind of bother a fighter, like dealing with the nerves that we deal with and like big pressure moments and we're trying to get rest and we're trying to cut weight or whatnot, whatever we're doing, like... I know that was happening. I've had it happen to me on fight day one time where I was fighting in another state and like fight day, this guy comes up to my hotel room and he's like in my room for like an hour and a half on fight day when I have a whole like, you know, ritual. I'm trying to like meditate and read a book and get in my zone, you know, and he's in there fucking talking to me and watching me and I'm like, I, I, I can't go to the bathroom yet. Like, I'm sorry. I, I just went before. Now I got this guy and he can't leave until I go. So it's like, you know, it's, it can affect your energy and, and the way you feel on the day that you have to perform. So, Yeah, yeah, man, that's crazy. And the last question, man, they, they put the title fight together, the Bantamweight division between uh, Sean O'Malley and uh, Cheeto Vera. I think a lot of people are pissed off, especially the, the contenders in the division. How do you feel about the fight? You know, I understand the business where it's uh, entertainment over – who is the actual best number one guy that earned his spot that deserves to get that chance at a title, who I think is either, you know, Sanhagen or Marab. Those, those two guys are probably the best. Uh, but, you know, this is how the business works. Numbers, viewership, entertainment, and, of course, there's rivalry there with this story. So headlines and stuff like that play a role, and I get that's why this fight's happening. Um, you know, but... I do feel for those guys because I wish the sport was a little bit more like the best guy who earned his spot is fighting the next best guy. Uh, it would be a little bit more uh, legitimate to me like all the other sports that are on the big networks. But uh, <clears throat> I guess we just have to accept as fighters that like this is how it is. You just – you know, it's like you can't think – the way Sanhagen thinks is like, no, this is an art. This is martial arts. I, I do this and I don't care who I fight and – I want to fight the best guy that has the most, you know, high level skills that there are. And that's very respectable, but it's just not how the sport works. So it's kind of like you have to just push that aside and say, I got to do what's best for me and my life and, and money and what is going to get me in that spot the quickest. San Hager just did an interview and, and he called uh, Sean O'Malley 
Malibu's Most Wanted. Like, that's what he says, a character from Malibu's Most Wanted. Yeah, you know, I can relate to a lot of things that Corey Sandigan says, you know, on a human level, like, just as a normal person, like, but when I see what goes on, you know, and I realize how the sport works, it's like, I never want to step out of who I am, and I could be goofy, I could be funny, I can do the music stuff and call guys out and talk my shit. I'm not, like, a heavy shit talker, but, like... You got to figure out a way to kind of stand out these days or else, you know, you just get pushed aside and become like a regular guy. And it doesn't really matter if you win five fights in a row. There's demons in these divisions that are five, six and oh, and they just never get pushed. And then there's a guy like O'Malley that can win, you know, three fights, poke a guy in the eye and have a, you know, uh, a controversial win. And then oh, you're, you're fighting for a title because we know you're, you're the guy that everyone wants to see. It's just how it works. It is. It's the business, man. Hey, back to business for you. December 16th, UFC 296 in Las Vegas, man. Thank you, Brian, man. Always good catching up to you. I'm so happy to see you back, man, because we talked before the last fight. You were completely ready, and I was I was shocked to see, like, you get pulled because of your neck. But, I'm, but you mentioned before that the neck injury has been lingering for a long time. It's great that it's fixed. Let's see what you can do. Yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a blessing. I feel you know that this all happened and uh, got taken care of, and I'm I'm excited to be back, man. I feel like it's a whole new me. So let's go.